Okay, so we have gas particles inside a container again, and now what we're doing is we increase the temperature we're heating up. So when we do that, you can see the volume increases. Now it's important to keep a note in this situation that the pressure, and that's mainly from the atmospheric pressure above, is constant in both cases. There's also a bit of pressure from the weight of this bar, but it's constant in both situations. So is the number of particles inside. So what's happened to volume? The volume has increased. So the reason is because if, if you heat up the particle, um, the gas inside, the average kinetic of the, of the particles increases, so they collide with the wall at greater velocity. And when they bounce back off, there's a bigger change in momentum. So if there's a bigger change in momentum, the force should increase and therefore the pressure should increase. But as you can see in this situation, pressure is constant. So what happens is that the time between collision needs to increase. And that's because the, wall, the, the container wall expands, the volume increases. So the time between collisions increases. The particles are further away from each other. And also the distance that you travel between collisions is greater. So the, the time between collisions also gets bigger. So volume increases to uh, decrease time between collisions, which ensures pressure is constant. Okay, Charles Law states that for constant mass and constant pressure, so in other words, the same number of particles and constant pressure, the volume occupied by the gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So absolute temperature means we need to use Kelvin from now on. Okay, you can't use degrees Celsius. You get it wrong if you use degrees Celsius. Um, you can write this as V is directly proportional to T, or you can write this as V over T equals constant, or V1 T over T1 equals V2 over T2. And V1 and T1 are the volume and temperature before, and v, V2 and T2 are the volume and temperature afterwards. Okay, a piston containing gas initially occupying 50 centimeters cubed is heated so that its temperature increases from 20 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Determine the new volume of the gas in the piston. So here we're going to assume that the pressure is constant and the number of particles is also constant. The first thing we need to keep in mind is that we can't just simply do the temperature doubles, so the volume doubles. That's because this temperature is in degrees Celsius, so we need to initially convert it to Kelvin, to the absolute temperature scale. So that becomes 293 Kelvin, and this becomes 313 Kelvin. So now we're ready to use V1 over T1. It's constant, which is going to be V2 over T2. So we put this in 50 over 293 equals V2 over 313. Rearranging this, you get 53.4 centimeters cubed. And then we can check if that makes sense. Yep, because we've increased the temperature by a bit, so the volume has increased by a bit. Okay, so if you plot volume against absolute temperature, you get a straight line going through the origin because it's directly proportional. However, if you plot volume against temperature with degrees Celsius, it doesn't go through the origin. So how can, let's assume that we don't know what absolute zero is. We can use this graph to find absolute zero. Because at absolute zero, the volume of an ideal gas and the pressure of the ideal gas becomes zero. So we actually need to find this point here where the volume is zero. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use two points from here, figure out the equation of the line and extrapolate backwards and find the x-intercept. So here we have the two points. We've got 0 0.60 at 25 um, degrees Celsius and we've got at 80 degrees Celsius, we've got this. So first I'm going to make the equation of the line and then I will use that. Okay, so y equals mx plus c. To find the gradient, change in y. Making sure you do that the right way around. I'm staying quite precise for now. And then, so now, so far the equation line we've got is To find the y-intercept c, I'm going to use the 25-degree set of data to calculate c. 
So if I use 0 0.600 meters cubed at 25 degrees Celsius, I can find the C. So this here is 0 0.05318. So if I rearrange that, I will get a C of, um, let me just write this down. Zero point five four nine six eight. So this, so we've got that so far. So now what one, what I want is I want the x-intercept. So I need to set this y t equals zero. So if I set the y t equals zero, I can bring this here to the other side. So it becomes minus zero point five four nine six eight equals two point zero one two seven three times into minus three x. And then rearranging that, you should get x is equal to minus 273.1 degrees Celsius, which is absolute zero.